Let's analyze this high-level college doubles point, and I'm going to show you what these four players could have done to play much smarter strategy. Now, this video is courtesy of Jay Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I put their link in the description below. Now, I first want to preface this with saying I cannot beat any of these players. So I am certainly not saying that I would do so much better from a level of play standpoint. But what I will say is that just the way this point was played, uh, there was a lot left on the table here when it comes to the strategies that were used. So let's first look before the serve is even hit. Here we have the returner's partner standing in no man's land. And I have no problem with this whatsoever. I think it's a really smart play. Now, we have to understand why this player is in the middle of no man's land. And I'm sure you know. The reason is because the server is doing a really good job of hitting strong serves where the returner is hitting it too close to the net player. Or maybe the server is serving and volleying and the returner is hitting high balls that if this player were up and standing closer to the net, he'd be getting slammed with the ball. So the player stands in the middle of no man's land. Well, then I have a simple question for this player. Why, when the ball goes into play, before the, sir, before the return is ever hit, why is this guy going forward? Watch, he's starting in no man's land, and before he even sees where the return is hit, he's already gone forward. If you're starting in the middle of no man's land or wherever you're starting to try to give yourself more time to react if a ball is slammed to you, then don't go forward until you know where the return is hit. So it's a really strong serve and you can see the returner trying to get out of the way, right? So he's getting jammed with this ball and we can notice the server's partner actually pinch to try to cut this ball off. So really, if I were this player's coach, I would say you cannot go forward until you see where the return goes and you see what is done with that next ball. Now, here's the interesting thing. The server serves in volleys, which I love, and he comes forward and attacks and he gets the exact ball that you want when you serve in volley. When you serve in volley, what you are looking for is a high ball. Now, there is a simple rule in double strategy. When you have a high ball, like a high volley, or you have an overhead, you want to hit it hard toward the person closer to you. When you have a high volley or an overhead in doubles, find the person closer to you and hit it hard right at their feet. Even if they get that ball back, the ball pops up very softly at you, and then you can end the point by just crushing it right by them. They have no time to react. But the volleyer, the servant volleyer, he gets a high ball, but he hits it to the baseliner. And I don't want to read in the comments, oh, Ryan, he's so far back. It doesn't matter. He's playing for Stanford, right? So if you're a Stanford tennis player, you can take a high volley and hit it to the net player so and hit it at their feet easily. So I don't want to hear that at all. I mean, you can write it to help the algorithm, but it's not going to be true. A first volley that is high, you crush it right at that player's feet, right at the net here, which is why I'm actually telling this player that he should not have gone forward because he has to wait to see what type of return is hit. If the return is hit low, at the feet of the server coming in, serving and volleying, then this player can go forward, but only then. But it was incorrect for the returner's partner to go forward so early. It's just that the servant volleyer let him off the hook by hitting it back cross court. So the volley is hit cross court. In this situation, you have two players up and you have one up, one back. In this scenario, you've got to either hit the ball super high up over their head or you've got to hit the ball very low over the net. If you hit a medium ball, again, both of these players should be playing basically two on one and just crushing it at the net guy with no time to react. Luckily, the baselander keeps the ball low and the volleyer then volleys it actually correctly back to the baseliner. See, if you have a low volley, 
or a volley that's uh, net level, then it's actually correct to go back to the baseline. Or any high ball, you crush it at the net player who doesn't have enough time. Now, here is where things become very interesting. The returner floats a slice over the net player's head or the serve and volleyer's head. Now, I'm going to say this. I would say, let me write this down. 99% of the time, when a lob occurs in doubles, the players move incorrectly. And I can prove it to you just with simple logic. When a lob goes over the head, this is typically what you see. You see the players who lobbed, these two players in yellow, move up tight to the net. That is the incorrect thing to do. And the reason is all we have to ask ourselves is what is this player going to attempt? So watch this. Watch them run back. The player in the red hat, he's running back. We're looking straight at his back. He is going to lob. Well, what shot do the players in yellow want to hit off of a lob? They should be trying to hit an overhead. They are not going to hit a very good overhead getting tight to the net. This is what Vic Braden called rushing the net to lose at a faster rate. Because all you're doing is getting tight to the net, making it easier for this player to lob over them. Just realize the tighter you get to the net, the easier it is for that lob to go over your head because there's more space behind you. So where should these two players be? The players in yellow? They should have their toes on the service line. Put your toes on the service line. That means if it's a weak lob, you can go forward. If it's a strong lob, you can go back two steps. If they hit a ground stroke, you can quick move forward and volley it off at an angle. You have options when you stay on the service line. But since they got tight to the net, if this ball lands in, they are then the ones in trouble. And then you'd want to see these two players come up and put their toes on the service line. But this is typically what you see in pro tennis, in college tennis, and in recreational tennis. So if you want to be different, if you want to have a big advantage over your opponents, when you lob over them in doubles, put your toes on the service line. Then whether they hit a bad lob, a medium lob, or an amazing lob, you're able to get in position and hit an overhead. Luckily for the players in yellow, the ball lands out. They scream, come on, and they're all excited. But actually, they're lucky because if that ball had landed in, uh, they would have been in trouble. All right, let's watch this point one more time. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to diagram that point up on the big board. But to start beating your toughest opponents, I want you to pick up a copy of the Doubles Playbook by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Almost 100 pages of strategy after strategy to help you beat your toughest opponents. Each strategy comes with a QR code. Just put your phone or tablet up over the code. Up pops a video of Will Hamilton showing you exactly how to use that strategy. You can use my link. It's in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. And if you're looking for new people in your local area to play match, against or practice with, or if you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link for Player Court, and it's playercourt.com slash two minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. I want to reiterate here, I cannot beat any of those players, but as a coach, my job isn't to beat players. My job is to coach them and help them raise their level of play. And I don't blame the players for the way they were playing doubles. It, this is a coaching issue. So the coaches need to record the video, uh, record the matches, look over the video, and do a video session with these players and make sure that they correct these strategic errors. If high level college, some of the best college players in the world are making these mistakes, then it's, it's pretty evident that recreational players are going to make these mistakes too. So remember, if you're the returner's partner and you are starting farther back, so that you can have more time to react in case the return is hit near the server's partner because they are blasting you because you're up on the service line, so you're standing further back. It doesn't make any sense the moment the serve is hit that you start going forward. You don't need to be back here 
when the serve is hit, the ball's not coming to you on the serve. The ball's going to the returner. So if you're back, it only makes sense to wait until the ball gets past the server's partner before you start going forward. And if this player is a serve and volleyer, then you have to make sure that this player has a low ball. So it's even harder to know to come in because not only does the returner have to keep it away from the server's partner, they have to give a low ball to the server who's coming in. If the ball is hit high, this player should actually be nailing you if you're up. So wait until the ball gets low, then you can go forward. Otherwise, if it's going to this player or it's high to the server coming in, you should actually move back. Now we saw this player hit it back to the baselander. He needed to notice that this player moved forward. Some of you might have been like, oh, but Ryan, he didn't know that player went forward. That's his responsibility. He has to peripherally see that this player has now gone forward. He hit the ball cross court. Now, I really liked this next shot from the returner. He kept the ball very, very low. And I liked the shot from the server. He realized it was a low ball, it was around net level. So he took it back to the baseliner. Now, this is where things got a little, a little out of whack. It was a short shot. The returner came in and hit a slice lob. It was a beautiful lob, nice and deep. And these players correctly went back. It would be incorrect for this person to stay up. He went back with his partner. But these two players made a mistake and you see it all the time. And I would say, as I wrote, 99% of the time when a lob occurs, the players go to a place that doesn't really help them logically when you talk it out and you diagram it like this. These two players got tight to the net. This player got really tight to the net. This person hung out here. Remember, this player is going to lob and they are going to lob 95 times out of 100. You wanna hit overheads. Well, if you're here, you can only get bad lobs and mediocre lobs, you know, average lobs. You cannot get a good lob. If you hang out on the service line, and what I like to tell my students is, put your toes on the service line. Not even your heels, not your arch, put your toes on the service line. It's an easy way to make sure you don't start creeping in, but that you hang out with your toes on the service line, staying back. That way, if it's a bad lob, you can always come forward. If it's an average lob, it comes right to you. And if it is a nice deep lob, you can move back two steps and you can still hit the overhead and then go forward. By being this tight to the net, it just made it so easy for this team to get it over their heads. They hit it too long and this player, these two players went back and they won the point, but they really got lucky that they did not get lobbed over their head with how close they were. I will say this, these two players should have come up to the service line. Remember, toes on the service line. So, by the way, if you would like me to analyze your match play and your double strategy, then record yourself playing a match and then send that video footage to me, ryan at twominutetennis.net, and go to twominutetennis.net, my website, and sign up for a Zoom private lesson. This is where I'm gonna meet one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two -on -two with you and your doubles partner, and I'm gonna diagram your match strategy just like I did here for this YouTube video, except it's gonna be you, and I'm gonna show you where you can stand and where you can hit the ball, shot selection, court positioning, strategy and tactics on how to beat your opponents. Then I'll come on the big board here and I will teach you and your doubles partner live all the movements and ideas that you can use in order to start winning more matches. If you use the ideas and concepts and strategies in this video into your own and you integrate it into your own match play strategy, there is no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.